Famcast Media. Bitch. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, persons of all ages, welcome to the most exclusive group in the wrestling community. And now, our host, first, from Oaxaca, Puerto Rico. Mi gente, como estamos? Welcome to a Friday edition of Must Love Wrestling. As I do another car pod. And I'm excited about this one because we have a lot to talk about. So the other day, Tony Khan, that's right, our number one topic of conversation here on Must Love Wrestling, he tweeted out how unfair it was that Jinder Mahal was getting a World Heavyweight Championship match after a year of losing. And there is national outrage over Hook, who was 28-1 in his career. And is getting a title shot against Samoa Joe. And he said, where is the outrage for gender? Is this not a double standard? Now, this led to a lot of discourse on social media. A lot of people upset with the goings-on of professional wrestling. And why Tony Khan, a businessman, continues to put himself in this position. Now, there have been a lot of people that have stated... That Tony Khan does this because it is a media strategy. So my question before I continue is, if this is a media strategy and we are to take it as such, that means that the 800,000 people that watch Dynamite on Wednesday nights will turn into 900,000, right? That the... 350 to 400,000 that watch Rampage on Friday will turn into five to 600,000, right? And the same goes on for Collision. Well, guess what, guys? It did not do so. To be quite honest with you, Dynamite lost viewers this week. They clocked in 797,000 viewers. Now, I know 3,000 is not a lot, but it's still a decent amount of people. For a night where there's no major sporting events. It is a Wednesday night. A boring Wednesday night with not a lot of brand new stuff on television. Now you would think to yourself. This is something smart. He did this so that way people pay attention and they tune into his product. But as I've stated before and I will state again. Everybody's made up their mind. They know what they're getting when they watch AEW. They're not getting anything special. It's the same stuff. It's bingo ball booking with one or two storylines mixed into the whole card. Now, <clears throat> what I found very interesting is the change of the guard. I believe the proper term is the changing of the guard. All of the wrestling media pundits like Brian Alvarez, Dave Meltzer, even JD from New York. A lot of these people have been on Tony's side from the beginning. A lot of these people have, they've rocked with him, said, oh, we're just WWE shills. And we only like what's been given to us because we're just WWE lifers. But they no longer sing that tune. No, no, no. Now, they're questioning Tony Khan's stability and his job I find this odd because Brian Alvarez went on this little tangent yesterday where he actually called out Tony Khan for a lie he said where is the outrage for Hook getting a title shot he said there's an outrage I haven't seen anybody on the internet complaining about it he said where is Why aren't people outraged about Jinder Mahal? But they are. There are people that are angry. Why is Jinder wrestling Seth Rollins with all of the talent they have on Monday Night Raw? So it's quite opposite 
of what Tony Khan is trying to push a narrative of. It's become increasingly frustrating because as we go to the wind down for Sting's career, we realize that that entire pay-per-view is going to be Sting's last match. It's going to be Sting and Darby Allen versus the Young Bucks. And that's going to be the way he walks out of the business. Now, whether or not I'm happy that it's Sting versus the Young Bucks, that doesn't matter at this point. What matters is me and my son will drive to North Carolina to go watch this match because I will not miss my all-time favorite wrestler wrestle in his final match for professional wrestling. I want to be there. I want to see it. Guys, one of the hardest things to do as a wrestling promoter is to organically get people to watch your product. So what you do is you create controversy. Eric Bischoff was very smart at this. And I've seen a lot of people complaining that Eric Bischoff and Tony Khan were going at it with each other and that Eric did all of this stuff. Listen, he may have, but it worked for him. And this isn't the same era of professional wrestling. Tony Khan says he doesn't want to make the mistakes that Eric Bischoff made, yet he's making them. And they're not capitalizing on the mistakes. I honestly don't know what Tony Khan is thinking. You see, as I sit here in my car driving to work, what I have realized is that Tony Khan refuses to hire people that are in the business, that know the business, and he refuses to take their advice. Ricky Starks said, I wish people in my company would stop tweeting. Samoa Joe, the world heavyweight champion, a finally a world heavyweight champion that we can be proud of for AEW. Not mini Max. I mean, he said it himself in his promo. I believe the exact words he said was, now you won't have to send those ho-ass tweets. I mean, guys, it's, it's increasingly obvious that Tony Khan has rubbed people the wrong way. But what's not okay with that is that he's rubbing his talent the wrong way. Now, sure, they're bringing in more talent. They brought in Adam Copeland. They brought in Christian Cage. There's rumors that they're bringing in Nick Nemeth, Mercedes Bernardo. But I ask you guys, is it going to make a difference? Now that's a controversial tweet. That was interesting. Eric Bischoff saying that Mercedes signing with AEW won't push the needle. That is a controversial tweet that I'd like to talk about. But we did that on the last show, so we're not going to do it on this show. You see, when Tony Khan does this, I think he's watching old wrestling. He's doing what you and I do. He's going back and he's watching eras of professional wrestling and saying this worked before and people like the old school so they will like it again. The problem is is it's not working that way anymore. Fans are not interested in that type of controversy. Fans are interested in storytelling. They want to know why they're going to tune in. Samoa Joe, Swerve Strickland, Adam Page vying for the World Heavyweight Championship. That's a story worth monitoring Hook versus Samoa Joe that's a story worth monitoring but Tony Khan tweeting and not only did Tony Khan tweet but he he disparaged gender what a mistake that was 
You see, because the one thing that we can say is that the three members of 3MB, since separation, have all done really well for themselves. Between the three superstars, there are three World Heavyweight Championships between them. Drew McIntyre was a two-time WWE champion during the COVID era. He main evented WrestleMania. He beat Brock Lesnar. He won the Royal Rumble. And Jinder Mahal. He beat the legend killer. He beat Randy Orton to be WWE champion. He held on to the championship for a good amount of time. Jinder Mahal isn't just some schmo. He's not just some jobber. He's a former WWE champion. He's a talented in-ring performer. He looks the part. He represents himself well. And he has an entire fan base behind him. Whether you're a fan of him culturally or you're a fan of his because you enjoy his WWE run. The guy has a market. You cannot sit here and say, why is this guy in a World Heavyweight Championship match? This happens all the time. In WWE, guys leave, they come back, they get championship matches. It's just the way of the business. If Kenny Omega healed himself up right now, And he came in and challenged Samoa Joe. No one would bat an eye. Everyone would be clamoring Samoa Joe versus Kenny Omega. Yes, pump it into my veins, as the co-host of this podcast says all the time. But of course, according to Tony Khan, he looks at what we see on television and he sees Jinder hasn't been winning matches. So let's point that out. Well... Winning and losing in professional wrestling isn't really that important anymore. Before this World Heavyweight Championship reign, Seth Rollins went 11 out of 12 pay-per-views losing. He lost every championship opportunity he had, and he lost every big program that he had. He even lost to Matt Riddle. Oh, excuse me, sorry. Guys, sometimes professional wrestling is easy to decipher. It's not a Rubik's Cube. It's as easy as 2 plus 2 equals 4. You just have to have your eyes wide open. Now, I really thought that Tony was going to make a difference in the people watching his product. I really thought he was going to make a difference in the people that are attending his live events, his pay-per-views. So far, that has not been the case. And I know that the co-host of our podcast here, he says this isn't a big deal, but it is a big deal. Heat is heat. But sometimes, if your heat is making people not watch your product, and when you do something so controversial like this, it's not making people tune in, to find out what's going to happen, well, that's an issue. And if anything, now I disagree with Tony Khan in calling WWE competition. They are not competition for WWE. They are competition for TNA. But if WWE is the competition that he's trying to face... I believe more people will tune in Monday night to watch Jinder versus Seth. I believe that that will be a higher rated segment, match, than anything that AEW has done. Tony Khan made it seem like nobody cared about this. Yet 2.53 million people tuned in at that exact moment in which Jinder and Seth were in the ring. As I said before, gender has a market, just like every professional wrestler. There are wrestling fans for Brock Lesnar. There are wrestling fans for Roman Reigns, for Brian Danielson, for AJ Styles, 
for Seth Rollins. So yes, there is a market. Yes, there is a fan base behind Jinder Mahal. So guys, get out there. Tune in Monday night. Watch Jinder's match versus Seth. No, this is not long-term booking. Sure, are they going to play it that way? Are they going to point out the Seth beat Jinder Mahal for the inaugural NXT World Championship? Absolutely, they're going to point that out. They're going to give us a reason to be invested. It doesn't need to be long, long-term storytelling to get us excited about something. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in to Must Love Wrestling in our newest car pod edition as we decipher Tony Khan and what his tweet really meant. I am Macho Rodriguez and tune in tonight as we do our live Must Love Wrestling show with both of our co-hosts, Macho Rodriguez and Tyler Taylor. Guys, please like, subscribe, follow, check out our YouTube channel, subscribe, share it. Word of mouth is the best way to get our podcast out there. We appreciate all of you here from Must Love Wrestling. We love all of our fans, so please write us questions, comments, give us topics to talk about on the show, things that you want to touch on that haven't been talked about in a long time. We would love to have those conversations. Thank you so much, guys. And from Must Love Wrestling, we are out.